psalm again, and uh, the title of this psalm is When Brothers Dwell in Unity. Brothers and sisters, I might add, okay? <laughs> so listen to what the psalmist says. It says, Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers and sisters dwell in unity. What a blessing that is. When there's no, you know, arguments, backbiting, fighting, whatever. Uh, how, how pleasant that is when brothers and sisters dwell in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head, running down on the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robes, meaning that it, 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 it permeates, it, 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 it seeps into every crack and crevice of our life. You know, there's nothing that gets missed, you know. What a blessing that is. And then he goes on, he says, it's like the dew of Hermon. That's the mountain of Hermon in, in Israel, which falls on the mountains of Zion. The dew just, just permeates every blade of grass. There's nothing that's missed. And it says, for there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Well, what a blessing that is, right? From the from the uh, from the psalm. Then the second reading is from the prophet Amos, and uh, this is a rather um, serious uh, message from this <laughs> from this prophet because he talks about uh, the nation of Israel's guilt as well as their punishment that is coming from the mouth of God. And, and, and God held Israel accountable to this. So, and, and Israel was God's chosen people. So if God is this, um, how do I want to say this? If, if God is this uh, serious on the people of Israel, his chosen people, uh, how much more serious is he in, to us today here in the United States? <laughs> I mean, I mean, go figure, right? So listen to what he says to Israel, and then let's apply it to us today, living here in the United States and around the world. All right? He says, Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O people Israel, against the whole family that I brought up out of the land of Egypt. Now notice God says, Understand, I was the one that brought you out of Egypt, a whole nation. I took you out of bondage from Egypt, and I brought you into your, your, your own land, yet you rebelled against me. So this is the message that God is, he's really displeased with this. How, how Israel just intentionally just rebelled against God. And, and I'm, I'm going to be very straight up. The United States is doing the exact same thing today. Intentionally rebelling against God. Intentionally. Doing it voluntarily and with full intent. So notice what, what God says. He says, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. In other words, of all the people on the earth, you're the one that I appointed to, to, to put my blessings through that would then permeate to the entire world. But it starts with you. <laughs> oh, baby. So he goes, therefore, because of that, because of all how I how I love you and how I singled you out over everybody else, and if you want to if you want to say for preferential treatment, okay, go ahead, you can say that. He goes, therefore, because of all that, he says, I'm going to punish you for all your iniquities. Now he's talking about Israel, so if he's saying this to them, what is he saying to us? But he says, I I, I will punish you for all your iniquities, and then he says this. He goes, do two walk together? unless they have agreed to meet? In other words, are they walking side by side unless they've agreed to meet? Obviously not, you know? So they have to have this agreement that, hey man, we're gonna walk together. We're not gonna, we're not gonna go our own way. We're not gonna sow seeds of conflict, but rather we're gonna walk together and we're gonna do this intentionally. That's the message that he's saying there. So do two walk together unless they've agreed to meet? Does a lion roar in the forest when he has no prey? Does a young lion cry out from his den if he has taken nothing? 
Does a bird fall in a snare on the earth when there's no trap for it? You know, he, he's bringing these rhetorical questions. And then he goes, um, is a trumpet blown in a city and the people are not afraid? Does disaster come to a city unless the Lord has done it? Well, obviously not. And then he declares to man, what is his thought who makes the morning darkness and treads on the heights of the earth? The Lord, the God of hosts, is his name. So tremendous words from the prophet Amos. Now, uh, let me share with you what the writer of our devotional, how he wonderfully unpacks this truth for us this morning. He says this, and I, I trust this is going to bring you real genuine peace this morning. He says, when a friend, family member, or co-worker says, well, let's go for a walk. There's a sense of anticipation and delight. We look forward to the friendly fellowship and caring conversation that will occur during that time together as we share both the joys and the concerns of life. Boy, how beautiful that is. Because everybody has those same things, no matter who they are. So take an informal visual survey from a park bench or your front porch and observe how happy and content people seem when they walk by with others. It's not very common to see walkers having an argument. It's not. That's pretty profound, amen? <laughs> so your life together in a fallen world is not always a walk in the park. Most assuredly. <laughs> so because we are all sinners... Conflict and dysfunction at work, at home, and even in the church plagues our relationships. And boy, it does. It really does. It's easy for us to focus on how others have wronged us and to forget how we have sinned against them on both sides of the equation. Amen. So rather than resolving our personal grievances, we choose to remember them. So instead, our Heavenly Father, who sought reconciliation with us through our Lord Jesus Christ, encourages all of us to confess our own sins and then seek peace with others. It is indeed good and pleasant. You know, we've all failed. So one of the most beautiful words that we can tell another person is, I'm sorry, please forgive me. All right? So when brothers and sisters in Christ can dwell in unity and walk together as a part of his body rather than apart from one another, we ask for God to help us. God's word for us this morning, amen? So let me just assure you, if we will put that into, <laughs> into practice, believe me, we will have true, genuine real peace. You know, that's that, that's a fact, okay? So God's blessings to you. So, O oh Lord, have mercy. O oh Christ, have mercy. O oh Lord, have mercy. So brothers and sisters, together, let's, after that wonderful message, let's pray the wonderful prayer our Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer. And so together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we want to profess the Christian faith again using the words of the Apostles' Creed because that capsulizes everything that we believe as a Christian. So together we profess. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty.
From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So hear our prayer, O Lord, let our cry come to you. In the day of our trouble we call upon you, for you answer us. Hide your face from our sins and blot out all of our iniquities. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Cast us not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation, and uphold us with a willing spirit, because your steadfast love is better than life. Our lips will praise you, for you have been our help, and in the shadow of your wings we will sing for joy. Teach us your way, O Lord, that we may walk in your truth. Unite our hearts to fear your name, and we give thanks to you, O Lord our God, with our whole hearts, and we will glorify your name forever. May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you, and may those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. Save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. Give ear, O oh Lord, to our prayers and listen to our pleas for grace. We continue to pray. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept us this night from all harm and danger. And we pray that you would keep us this day also from sin and every evil that all of our doings and life may please you. For into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, and souls in all things. Let your holy angels be with us, that the evil foe may have no power over us. Amen. So brothers and sisters, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. So brothers and sisters, how good it was to bring to you peace to the word this morning. Pray that you will have that today. And I also pray that you will go out and enjoy the day that God has given to you. Please do not let the things of the circumstances rob your joy. You know, God gave you this day. He wants your joy to be full and in abundance, all right? So go make that happen today, all right? Have fun. So until we meet again, it's blue skies and wheels up, and God's blessings to you in abundance. Amen. Okay.